you know, when I was going to church, my parents always had me in church, and I got to be in church, this and that, you know, church was a bummer to me. I mean, there was nothing that church had for me except the girls, because I figured, you know, hey, a lot of pretty girls there, I was in like Flint. But you know, even that, after a while, I found out those some of those girls in churches, uh, their walk didn't match their talk either. They were there for the same reason, probably look for the guys. And that's okay. We all got different reasons that we do things in life, and we're all going to come to a point in our life where we're going to have to make that decision. Are we going to believe in God or not? Well, I didn't believe in Him. Well, maybe I believed in Him a little, but later on I found out that even the devil believes in Him, and he's trembling. He's scared of Him because he knows the, the awesomeness, the sovereignty, the power of God. But I didn't know those things because I was religious. I didn't have a relationship. Didn't know there was a difference between religion, believing in God in your mind, versus your heart. So and because of that, I started looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for fulfillment in all the wrong places. And that took me from Memphis to Atlanta to Aspen, Colorado. I'm partying with all these people like Jimmy Buffett and Hunter S. Thompson, who took his life a couple of years ago, uh, to Robin Williams. The cocaine was flowing freely, and I was flying high, faster than a train. Oh! But I didn't know I was about to hit the wall because I was hooked up with all this party life and all this fast stuff, and I was on a ride. I was on a ride, and I thought, I'm in control. But I didn't know how far out of control I had become and what was about to happen to my life. A guy came to town spending lots of money, said, hey, if you ought to go to Florida, I keep an apartment down there, you're welcome to use it. And I went down to stay at this apartment thinking I'm gonna come back to Aspen and more partying. But now another guy came down and he wasn't there for vacation. He'd been ripped off on a drug deal to the tune of 30 grand. And he couldn't catch the guy ripped him off. So he came to me and said, hey, if you'll help me go in this apartment, nobody will be there and the money will be there. So I figured, Okay, that sounds easy enough. And I went for it hook, line, and sinker. Little did I know that my life was about to take a turn because I was shot with the 357 Magnum, that my leg shattered, the gun placed on my head, it went click twice, the guy was out of bullets, and I was about to lay in a hospital bed for one full year, being charged with attempted murder, attempted armed burglary, and possession of burglary too. Little did I know that I would end up in a place of crossroads, a place of decision in my life where I was knocked down and then I would have a choice. It's either nowhere to look but up or stay in my deception, stay in my prison that I didn't know I was in. Many of you out here today are in that same prison because the Bible says that Satan blinds us from receiving the glorious gospel. See, I thought I was in control. Many here think you're in control. You got it going on. But the battle is not against flesh and blood. There's a spiritual battle going on behind closed doors. Until we find out about that battle and how it works, we're still blinded. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's a spiritual thing. But the Bible also says that the unsaved person cannot understand these things. Neither can we know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's the reason Jesus said you've got to be born again of his spirit. So get his spirit, his word was spit, written by the spirit. It wasn't spitting by the spirit, it was written by the spirit. And then you start to say, wow, that makes sense. God starts to give you understanding. I go into prisons across this country, prisons that are overflowing with men and women, young people who didn't have a dad as a player in their life. And they turned to drugs and even worse. Young people who, was, who, were, who were abused sexually, physically, verbally. Their moms and dads split up, divorced. They were in the middle of all this stuff, all this confusion, all this pain. So they went looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for false comfort, looking for a temporary fix, just like I was doing that for a long time. But then they had to make a decision because every one of us are gonna get to that point where we fall down, there is none to help, then we're gonna cry out in our trouble. My question to you tonight is, have you reached a position in your life? Have you reached a point where you have fallen down you feel like you don't have any meaning in your life. You don't know which way to turn and you want to get some answers. Well, if you'll, after this break, come back. I'm going to tell you how I found the answers. And yes, it even took me going to prison with a life 15 sentence to get my heart awakened to the reality of God and how much he loves you.
and how much he cares for you and how much he wants to restore your life and make all things new so that you can walk in an all of gladness you never thought possible. I'll see you after the break. You saw that performing pig on the screen. That was Wilbur. He performed for 14 years, bringing a lot of laughter to a lot of people. But when the smoke clears, he was a pig. And when the smoke clears, I acted just like him. My whole life was all about what can I do? What can I get inside my body, inside my mind to, to gratify me, to fulfill my flesh, to make sure I was not empty anymore? And that's what I did. I was like living in a pigsty. Many that are watching this clip you're still in your same pigsty and you want so much to be fulfilled, but you haven't given God a chance. As the book, The Cross and the 357 Magnum will teach you, it will breathe life into my experience. It's all about how I had to come to a place, as we all do, that we would fall down and there is none to help. And then we cry out at our deepest point of need. I cried out and I got real with God and he got real with me, just like he wants to do with you. We've tried everything else, so why not give him a shot? Why not take him at his word and see if he's truthful, see if he's honest? Because if you don't try him and he's true, you've lost everything. But if his word is real, if he says that you've got to join his family to experience that, and you try it, he will, he will reveal himself to you like you never thought possible. My journey took me through a prison sentence with a life 15 sentence, but God didn't want me in there long. He just wanted me to come to terms with him for the first time in my life. So call us up, email us, get you a copy of that book. Get you a copy of the five CD, the audio set we did as we breathe life into it. It's an amazing story. And I'd love to come to your church, your youth group, so we can just really get down to brass tacks and talk about this guy named Jesus and what he really means to me and how he can change your life forever so that you can find that fulfillment that your heart desires so very, very much. Thank you so much, and God bless you.